I don't think there's a single character in fiction that I have thought about more than Arthur Morgan. On the surface, he might seem like your typical gunslinging outlaw, a man of few words and unapproachable. But as you peel back the layers, you find a man wrestling with his own morality, a man shaped by and at the same time shaping the world on the brink of change. And it's not just Arthur. Red Dead Redemption 2, at first glance, might seem like just another open world game. You might even write it off as a GTA game that's just set in cowboy times. But that's like saying a diamond is just a shiny rock. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a Pandora's box of stories, a canvas painted with the brush strokes of a thousand tiny details that breathe life into a world both beautiful and brutal. From the way the snow crumples under the horse's hooves, to the subtle changes in NPC behavior based on your actions, this game doesn't just create a world, it invites you to live in it. It's a world where side missions aren't just tasks, but stories that weave into the larger narrative, where your choices at the campfire shape the bonds you form with your gang. So if you're wondering why you should dive into this game even 5 years after its release, it's because Red Dead Redemption 2 isn't just a journey, it's a masterpiece that rewrites the rules of what a game can be in almost every aspect. Let me show you why you should play Red Dead Redemption 2. Listen to me! We don't want to kill any of you! Any more of you. <laughs> I give you my word, but trust me, we will. I work for Leviticus Corps. Come on, boys. We got our orders. Okay. You asked for it. We ain't Five, opening this door. Four. Three, two, one. Seems our friends have gone deaf. Wake them up a little. To put it in perspective, Red Dead 2 came out at the end of 2018, while this came out this year and also counts as an open world game. In an industry where titles can age like milk, Red Dead Redemption 2 ages like fine wine. It's a stark contrast to the fleeting charms of some of the latest Far Cry or the Assassin's Creed titles, since they often take a cookie-cutter approach to their quote-unquote open world games. Copy-paste enemy outposts, repetitive side missions with no meaning, and worlds that while large, lack depth and meaningful interaction. Red Dead 2, on the other hand, crafts a narrative-rich landscape. Here, every NPC has their own life, not just a scripted line. Missions aren't just waypoints, they're experiences that weave into the fabric of a living world. Where games like Ghost Recon Wildlands have been praised for their scale, Red Dead 2 matches this with unparalleled attention to detail. From its dynamic weather affecting gameplay, to wildlife that behaves with startling realism, Rockstar just simply set a new standard for open world games. And it isn't just a journey through the Wild West. It's a time capsule that transports us to the turn of the 20th century. This era, balancing between the fading old frontier and the rise of modern America, is portrayed with a rare authenticity in gaming. This world, from the snowy peaks of the Grizzlies to the swamps of Le Moyne, is a microcosm of a nation in transition. You see this in the clash of landscapes. The untamed wilderness sits uneasily alongside the encroaching industrialization. It's a world where the freedom of the open range is being slowly boxed in by the relentless march of progress. Okay, there she is. A real city. The future. Big cities. They're always repellent. Exactly. I'll find you in there. Go see what you can figure out. Yes. In Saint Denis, you witness the future arriving rapidly. Electric trams, bustling sidewalks, and grandiose architecture speak of a new world, one that's leaving the likes of Arthur Morgan and the Vanderlyn gang behind. The city is a character in its own right, a symbol of the new order that's sweeping across the land. But the game doesn't just show us the changing face of America, it immerses us in the cultural melting pot that was the late 19th century. You encounter communities of immigrants, each clinging to their traditions, while forging a new identity in this land of opportunity. The game's attention to dialects, clothing and customs adds layers of depth to these interactions. The environmental storytelling in Red Dead 2 is also unparalleled. Abandoned gold mines, derelict homesteads, and forgotten battlefields. Each tells a story of dreams made and broken. The world is littered with relics of the past, each a powerful reminder of the relentless tide of history. 
This setting also serves as a backdrop for the game's exploration of themes like freedom, loyalty, and the corrupting influence of power. The Vanishing Frontier mirrors the personal journeys of characters like Arthur and Dutch, men who are running out of space in a world that no longer has a room for their kind. The game's portrayal of Native American communities offers a stark commentary on the era's injustices. Reservations and broken treaties are not just historical footnotes here. They are lived experiences for characters you meet, adding a layer of somber reality to the game's narrative. What do you think? If they wanted trouble, we wouldn't have seen them. Poor bastards. We really screwed them over down here. In this world, the landscape is more than a scenery, it's a narrative device. The changing weather, the wildlife, the shifting skies, all serve to underscore the game's themes and the emotional journey of its characters. A thunderstorm isn't just a weather effect, it's a mood, a moment of foreboding. It's hard not to draw parallels with the real-life events and classic Western cinema that have shaped our perception of this era. Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't just recreate a period, it brings to life the essence of the American frontier at a pivotal moment in history. Its portrayal of the turn of the 20th century is reminiscent of classic Western films, yet it goes beyond cinematic tropes to capture the raw reality of the era. Consider the parallels with movies like Unforgiven or the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, these films known for their gritty realism and complex characters echo in Red Dead 2's narrative. However, the game takes it a step further by immersing players in the day-to-day -day life of this era, something movies can only touch on due to time constraints. The game's depiction of the fading Wild West mirrors the historical events of the time. The encroachment of industrialization, the displacement of Native American tribes, and the end of the outlaw era are themes deeply rooted in America's history. Red Dead 2 brings these elements to the forefront, allowing players to experience the tension and transformation of the era firsthand. In a way, Red Dead Redemption 2 does for video games what classic westerns did for cinema. It redefines the genre. Just as those films offered a more nuanced and authentic portrayal of the West, Red Dead 2 presents a world that's more than just gunfights and horseback chases. It's a world steeped in the complexities of history, culture and human emotion. The game's attention to detail, from characters to architecture and technology of the time, is akin to meticulous set designs of period films. But unlike a movie, where the audience is a passive observer, Red Dead 2 invites you to live in this world, to interact with its inhabitants, and to leave their mark on the unfolding story of the American frontier. As you ride through the heartlands, or navigate through the bayous, you're not just traversing a map, you're experiencing a slice of history. The game invites you to live in this world, to understand its rhythms and secrets. It's a world where every sunset and every breaking dawn tells a story of an America caught between legend and legacy. I guess I'm just worried. I ain't got that long, Dutch. I, I want folks safe before I go. Me too. And now we are stuck, east of the Grizzlies and out of money, and a, a long way from a dream of virgin land in the West. I know, my brother, but we are safe. We make a bit of money here, then we move again, head out around them, be west of Uncle Sam, in a few months, buy some land. I hope so. <laughs> Would you just look around you? This world has its consolations. <laughs> but in this world, you're not just a visitor, you're an active participant in a story that's as deep and sprawling as the landscapes you traverse. This isn't a world built for a mere spectacle, it's a stage set for a narrative that's as compelling and intricate as any classic of the western genre. The story of Red Dead 2 is the soul of the game, inviting us not just to witness but to live through a tale of change, morality and identity. At the heart of this narrative is Arthur Morgan, a character who transcends the archetype of a rugged outlaw. Arthur's journey is nuanced exploration of personal redemption and the search for meaning in a world that's rapidly changing. As players, we're not just controlling Arthur, we're experiencing his inner conflicts, his moral dilemmas, and his moments of introspection. His story is a reflection of the game's broader themes, the struggle between the old ways and the new, the clash of personal honor against societal change, and the quest for personal identity in a world that seems to have no place for men like him. 
For example, there's a moment in the game where Arthur finds himself helping a widow learn to fend for herself. This interaction, seemingly small in the grand scheme, speaks volumes about Arthur's character. It's a subtle yet powerful reflection of his empathy and the internal conflict he faces between his outlaw past and his desire for redemption. Well, you look better. Better and determined, thanks to you. And if I'm gonna learn to hunt, I figured it was time I learned how to use Cal's gun properly. How's that working out for you? Well, let's just say my prey is looking decidedly unscathed. <laughs> but the end of labor is to gain leisure. Is that not what Aristotle said? Well, I, I don't know much about Aristotle, but um, well, I know a thing or two about shooting a gun. Look, you gotta hold steady and firm. Hmm? You just focus. Breathe slowly, and always pull the trigger on empty lungs. The Vanderlyn Gang is more than a group of characters. It's a living, breeding community with complex relationships and a shared history. Each member of the gang is a fully realized individual with their own aspirations, fears and flaws. The dynamics within the gang are a microcosm of the game's world, showcasing the tensions and bonds that form in times of change. Take for instance the camaraderie around the campfire. These moments, where gang members share stories and songs, offer a glimpse into their lives and relationships. It's in these interactions that we see the human side of these outlaws, their hopes, their humor, and their sense of belonging. These scenes add depth to the narrative, making it a story about family, loyalty, and the inevitable end of an era. Red Dead 2's narrative richness is further enhanced by its thematic depth. The game delves into the moral ambiguities of life on the frontier, the impact of industrialization on the natural world and the traditional ways of life, and the existential struggles of individuals caught in the tide of history. These themes are deeply embedded in the story, turning it into a thoughtful journey through progress, the reality of violence, and what it means to cling to ideals in a world that's rapidly moving on. The brilliance of the narrative also lies in its pacing and structure. The game masterfully balances its epic main storyline with an array of side quests and open world exploration, creating a rhythm that feels both organic and compelling. This pacing allows you to delve deep into the heart of the Wild West at your own pace, discovering hidden stories and characters that enrich the overall experience you're having. For instance, consider the transition from the adrenaline-fueled chaos of the Valentine Bank heist to the tranquil, almost meditative, task of fishing with Dutch and Hosea. The shift in pace is not just a change in gameplay, but a narrative tool that allows you to reflect on recent events and the relationships between characters. The structure of the narrative also mirrors the physical and emotional journey of Arthur Morgan. From the high-stakes tension of bank heists to the serene moments of fishing by a river, the game ensures that every activity, whether it's a main mission or a side task, contributes to the overarching story. The seamless integration of various narrative elements keeps you engaged and invested in the world, making every moment in the game meaningful. For example, when Arthur takes Lenny for a drink in Valentine, what starts as a simple bar visit evolves into a night of drunken escapades, deepening our understanding of their friendship and providing a much-needed break from the gang's troubles. This moment exemplifies how even seemingly mundane activities are woven into the narrative, enhancing character development and story progression. Mm. Micah seemed to know a lot of people. That was the problem. How you mean? <laughs> oh. In Red Dead Redemption 2, every mission, conversation, and even the quiet moments of reflection are meticulously crafted to build towards the narrative's climax. The game's ability to balance action-packed sequences with introspective moments is a testament to its narrative prowess. It's this pacing and structure that makes the journey through Red Dead 2 not just a series of events, but a cohesive, immersive story that stays with you long after the game is over. But the emotional resonance of Red Dead 2's narrative is its crowning achievement. As the story unfolds, we form deep connections with the characters in the world. The game's conclusion, varying based on the choices made, is not just the end of a journey, 
It's a powerful statement on the consequences of past actions and the relentless march of time. It leaves us with a sense of nostalgia, loss and reflection. A testament to the narrative's power to move and engage us on a profound level. Another layer that adds depth to the Red Dead Redemption 2's narrative is the impact of player choices, of course. These choices range from significant moral dilemmas to seemingly trivial interactions, but they all shape your experience. Take for instance the encounter with the veteran Hamish Sinclair, where you have the option to go fishing with Hamish, which on the surface seems like a simple diversion. However, this interaction is more than just a fishing trip. It's an opportunity to explore Arthur's character. Choosing to spend time with Hamish reveals a softer, more reflective side of Arthur, showcasing his ability to form genuine connections outside the gang. This choice, while seemingly minor, adds layers to Arthur's character and enriches your experience of the narrative. Arthur! <laughs> Come in. You said, uh, we could go for a hunt. I did. There's this huge she-wolf been stalking me the last few nights I've been out, but she can wait. <laughs> Let's talk a while. Sure. <clears throat> so what do you do? Me? Uh, I'm a wanderer. I was born further north, but I spent a lot of time out west. It's funny. I never saw myself as a wanderer, man. But... The bodies lay so thick. You could have walked across the whole field without your boots touching mud. Those were bad times. Mm. Yes, they were. Would you like some more coffee? Please. The honor system further exemplifies this. Arthur's actions, whether honorable or dishonorable, have tangible effects on how the world reacts to him. A high honor level might lead to friendly interactions and potentially discounts at stores, while a low honor level results in a more hostile world which makes sense. It's kind of do what you want others to do to you, right? The system encourages you to consider the consequences of your actions, adding a layer of moral complexity to the game. Moreover, your choices in Red Dead 2 extend beyond the immediate gameplay to affecting the narrative's perspective. A key decision point that occurs towards the end of the game, where Arthur has to choose between helping John Marston escape or going back for gang's money. This choice significantly shapes the narrative's direction. Choosing to help John aligns Arthur's growing disillusionment and his desire to secure a better future for John, reflecting a redemptive arc for Arthur. On the other hand, going back for the money represents a commitment to the outlaw life and the gang's original ideals. Both choices, coupled with your honor level, shape the narrative's conclusion, providing a unique and personal experience that underscores the game's thematic exploration of choice and consequence. This interactivity is not just about shaping the story, it's about immersing you in a world where your decisions have weight and significance to some level. It's a testament to game's narrative design that these choices feel impactful and meaningful, making you an integral part of the storytelling process. But the heart of the narrative aren't just the choices we make, but the characters who bring this story to life. Each major figure in this story isn't just a cog in the machine of the plot, they're the very soul of the journey we undertake. As anyone who has experienced Red Dead 2 will tell you, the soul of this game is its protagonist, Arthur Morgan. He's the heart and soul of her journey through the dying days of the Wild West. But what elevates him from a regular character to potentially the greatest character in gaming history is the profound humanity that the writers have infused into his being. You see, Arthur isn't just a character. He's a living, breathing person with a depth that's rarely seen in this medium. He's a man of contradictions, torn between loyalty to his gang and a growing sense of disillusionment with the outlaw life. Just like you might feel caught between the comfort of sticking with a familiar but unfulfilling job and the daunting prospect of venturing into something new, or like a student torn between pursuing a practical career path or following their passion, Arthur's internal conflict mirrored these common crossroads we all face. And this inner turmoil is what makes Arthur so relatable. He's not a hero or a villain. He's a man trying to find his way in a world that's rapidly changing. And this struggle is something we can all empathize with. Another aspect of what sets Arthur apart is how he evolves over the course of the game. He starts as your typical tough guy, a loyal enforcer for the Vanderlyn gang. But as the story progresses, we see layers of his character unfold. 
His interactions with other characters, especially the ones outside the gang, reveal a compassionate side that he often tries to hide. <sighs> but I still don't believe in nothing. <laughs> often neither do I. <laughs> but then I meet someone like you and everything makes sense. <laughs> You're too smart for me, sister. <laughs> I guess I, I'm afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of, Mr. Morgan. Take a gamble that love exists and do a loving act. All aboard! It's a rare moment of vulnerability where he confronts the inevitability of his own mortality and the choices he's made. This scene isn't just a conversation, it's a window into his soul, showing us his capacity for introspection and self-awareness, traits that are often overshadowed by his rugged exterior. It's moments like these that elevate Arthur from a mere video game character to a figure with depth and complexity that resonates on a deeply human level. But it's not only the main protagonist who's well written to say the least. Another character that goes far beyond of what is expected is none other than Dutch Vanderlyn. As the leader of the Vanderlyn gang, Dutch is more than a charismatic outlaw. He's a man with a vision, a dreamer who sees himself as a Robin Hood figure in a way, fighting against the invasion of modern society. His belief in freedom, in living outside the constraints of a rapidly industrializing world, is what binds the gang together. They see him not just as a leader, but as a savior. And for many in the gang, he was their literal savior who gave them another chance at life. Dutch's philosophy is what sets him apart from mere criminals. He is an outlaw in the truest sense, guided by a code that values loyalty and freedom above all else. His fight is not just against the law, it's a fight to preserve a way of life that he sees as pure and just, in contrast to the corruption and hypocrisy of the civilized world. However, as the story unfolds, we see the cracks in Dutch's armor. The world he is fighting against is relentless, and his dream begins to crumble under the weight of reality. It's in these moments of desperation that Dutch's character truly shines. His speeches, filled with passion and conviction, are not just words, they're the last stand of a man watching his world and identity slowly disappear. And to what do we owe the pleasure, Agent Moron? I don't know if you're aware, but this... This is a civilized land now. We didn't kill all them savages only to allow the likes of you to act like human dignity and basic decency was outmoded or not yet invented. This thing, it's done. This place ain't no such thing as civilized. It's man, so in love with greed, he has forgotten himself and found only Appetites. And as a consequence, that lets you take what you please, kill whom you please, and hang the rest of us? Who made you the messiah to these lost souls you've led so horribly astray? I'm nothing but a seeker, Mr. Milton. You ain't much of anything more than a killer, Mr. Vanderlind. But I came to make a deal. It's time. You come with me, and I give the rest of you three days to run off disappear and go and live like human beings someplace else. You came for me? Risk life and limb in this den of lowlifes and murderers so that they might live and love? <sighs> Ain't that fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill all these folk, Dutch. Just you. In that case, it'd be my honor to join you. Excuse me, friends. I have an appointment to keep with. I think your new friend should leave now, Dutch. You're making a big mistake, all of you. <laughs> yeah, dreadful. We have got something. Something to live and die for. How awful for us. Mr. Milton, stop following us. 
This moment perfectly captures the essence of Dutch's struggle, the fight against a world that he believes is corrupt and unjust. And despite his increasingly desperate actions, Dutch never loses the sight of his vision. His descent into paranoia and his drastic decisions are not just acts of a man losing control, but of someone willing to do anything to keep his dream alive. His relationship with Arthur, once based on mutual respect and shared ideals, becomes a powerful representation of the clash between idealism and reality. Dutch's story is a tragic one, a tale of a visionary unable to reconcile his ideals with the changing world. His journey in Red Dead 2 is a testament to the complexities of leadership and the cost of holding on to dreams in the face of inevitable change. He remains until the end, a character as admirable for his convictions as he is tragic for his downfall. We need to go. You. You ran away. Oh, I did no such thing. Don't be a fool. They could be back here any minute. We did it, gentlemen. Well, we got some money. And with the train job, well, we got a whole lot of money. Come on. Everything is coming together, exactly as I planned. Another character who stands out with a story as compelling as any is John Marston. Known to fans from Red Dead 1, John's journey in Red Dead 2 adds layers to his already complex character. He's a character who embodies the struggle of change. In the case of Red Dead 2, we see a younger John, still stumbling through life and grappling with his responsibilities as a father and a partner. His journey is one of growth, as he navigates the challenges of loyalty, love and identity. John's relationship with Arthur is particularly significant. It evolves from one of rivalry and mistrust to a deep brotherly bond. This transformation is a testament to the game's narrative strength, showcasing how relationships can evolve and deeper over time. Arthur recognizing the potential in John often acts as mentor or as the older brother, guiding him towards a path of responsibility and redemption to ensure his safety. We ain't both gonna make it. Go. Now. I'll hold them off. It would mean a lot to me. Please. There ain't no more time for talk. Go. Arthur. Go to your family. Arthur! Get the hell out of here and be a goddamn man. You're my brother. I know. I know. The scene is not just symbolic, it's a passing of the torch. A moment where Arthur sees John not only as a brother, but also as a successor. Throughout the game, John's character is explored through his interactions with other gang members and his family, his love for Abigail and Jack, and his often clumsy but sincere attempts to be a good father and a husband add a powerful dimension to his story. These aspects make John's character arc not just a narrative of personal redemption, but also a story about the struggles and sacrifices of family and love in a harsh changing world, as well as adding additional context for the story of Red Dead Redemption 1. But no story would be complete without an antagonist. Micah Bell is a character you love to hate. A masterfully crafted antagonist in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. His presence in the game is like a dark cloud looming over the Vanderland gang, constant reminder of the treachery and moral decay that can fester even within the close-knit group. From the offset, Micah is portrayed as untrustworthy and self-serving. He's the kind of character who's always looking out for number one, regardless of the cost to those around him. His actions and decisions are driven by ruthless pragmatism that often borders on cruelty. This is a man who doesn't just cross moral lines, he seems to take pleasure in erasing them altogether. Micah's relationship with Dutch is particularly intriguing. He knows exactly how to manipulate Dutch, feeding into his worst impulses and paranoia. It's a toxic dynamic that serves to highlight Dutch's own descent into madness. Micah acts as a catalyst, accelerating the gang's disintegration and pushing Dutch towards decisions that are increasingly unhinged. We hid, but they took Abigail! Who did? Agent Milton and his men took her to Van Horn to be put on a boat and tried for murder. I am sorry to hear that. We gotta let her go. John's a... Uh, well, sorry, son. Without John, she's just bait. Got a bunch of money, Dutch. 
She's just a girl. They won't do nothing to her. But me and the boys know. Yep. We need to keep riding on this one, Dutch. You know it. Every man here knows so we it. we just gonna let the boy be made an orphan? It, it ain't like that. What is it like? I wanna live, cowpoke. I still got the choice. Dutch, it's just a girl. You're right. Dutch, Micah. It pains me to say it, Arthur. But he's right. This scene is a perfect example of Micah's manipulative nature. He doesn't just influence Dutch, he steers him towards chaos and destruction, all while maintaining a veneer of loyalty and camaraderie. His character is a reflection of the harsh realities of the Wild West, a world where survival often meant making unsavory choices. Micah represents the darker side of this reality, embodying the brutality and lawlessness that were part and parcel of the era. In the end, Micah's character serves as a stark contrast to Arthur. Where Arthur believes that violence should be cold, necessary and without feeling, Micah takes pleasure in it and embraces the chaos of the dying West. He's a reminder of what happens when ambition and survival instincts are untethered from any sense of morality or loyalty. And thank you. There I was, having a dull day only for you. To liven it up by letting me help you shoot up <laughs> half a town. You're a funny fella, Arthur. Real funny. <clears throat> why you act all sour all yeah, the time? Yeah, well, you ain't funny at all. So why you gotta act like the court chest? All right, listen. I'm sorry, but we're family now, Arthur. <clears throat> you and me. <clears throat> Sons of Dutch. Makes us brothers. <clears throat> Sometimes, brothers make mistakes. Beyond the main cast, other members of the Vanderland gang, along the various other characters Arthur encounters, brings a unique perspective and adds depth to the game's world. Sadie Adler is a standout among the supporting cast. Her transformation from a grief-stricken widow to a formidable gunslinger is both mesmerizing and horrifying. In many ways, she reminds me of Quentin Tarantino's movie Kill Bill. Like the bride, Sadie had lost everything, and this loss catalyzes her transformation into a relentless force driven by nothing but revenge. In an age where mainstream media like Disney and Netflix often churn out female characters that feel more like caricatures designed to represent all women, Sadie stands out. She's not a symbol, she's a fully realized character with her own motivations, flaws and strengths. Sadie's journey echoes the narratives of other female characters such as Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise or Sarah Connor from the Terminator series. These characters are celebrated not because they represent an idealized version of womanhood, but because they are complex individuals navigating extraordinary circumstances. They are compelling because they are real, with their own unique stories and battles. He was a good man, my Jakey. We was always sweet on one another. I'm sure. Yeah. I miss him every day, every moment. Oh, they turned me into a monster, Arthur. But my memories of him, they still pure. I ain't even got that. Aside from my Jake, you're the best man I've known. I know the company you keep. The competition ain't too fierce. <laughs> Charles Smith is another standout in the supporting cast. A man of Native American and African American heritage, Charles brings a unique perspective to the gang. His calm demeanor and strong moral compass often serve as a counterbalance to the more volatile members of the group. Charles's storyline, especially his involvement in the Native American struggles, adds a powerful layer to the game's exploration of displacement and cultural erosion. Charles' character is not just a skilled hunter and fighter, he is a thoughtful, introspective individual who grapples with his identity in a world that is often hostile to it. You coming, Arthur? I'm gonna try and save him. This fight is unwinnable. You go and distract them and let me get to him. Have it your way. The rest of you, ride with me. 
Let's meet up at the factory. Let's ride! Yeah! Go with him. Try and help there. I'm better off alone. We're riding with you. And lastly, Hosea Matthews deserves a special mention as well. As Dutch's oldest friend and seasoned con artist, Hosea provides a voice of reason and experience in the gang. His wisdom and caution often acts as a foil to Dutch's grandiose plans, and his presence in the game adds a layer of sophistication and cunning to the gang's operations, highlighting the strategic side of their outlaw life. Hosea's character brings a sense of history and depth to the Vanderland gang showing that there's more to being an outlaw than guns and bravado. So, what's your plan? Well, we'll see if we can track them, but we might need to lay bait to draw them out. Bears like fish, obviously, but they also have a sweet tooth. A lot of fellas bait then shoot from the trees, but I prefer to hunt on the ground. More dangerous, but we'll have a much better chance of getting good shot in. And if he bolts, we can start right off after him. But the story is created not just through individual characters, but through the intricate web of their interactions and dynamics. These relationships are the glue that make it all stick together so well. Take the camp, for example. It's not just a spot on the map, it's a living, breeding hub of activity. Here you'll find characters engaging in conversations, playing games, or dealing with their day-to-day -day lives. You might catch Hosea and Dutch debating their next move, or see Kieran and Tilly sharing a laugh over a private joke. These moments happen whether you're there or not, giving a sense of realism to this world. It's like walking into a room where a conversation has been going on long before you arrived. And this is where Red Dead 2 really shakes things up. Unlike many games where NPCs seem to pause their existence until the player shows up, here they have their own lives. They don't just stand around waiting for you to give them purpose. You might stumble upon two characters arguing in the woods, or witness a heartfelt conversation by the riverside, offering a glimpse into their personal lives and beliefs. It's these layers of interaction that build a world that's not just observed, but genuinely felt. Random encounters and overheard conversations in this world often lead to emergent stories. You could be riding on a trail and overhear a dispute, with the choice to intervene or simply ride on. Sometimes it's these small, seemingly inconsequential decisions that add to the richness of the experience you will have in this game. Red Dead 2 subtly encourages you to be part of these narratives, yet also respects the choice to remain an observer. As the story progresses, these relationships between characters evolve, reflecting the changing times they live in. You see alliances form, friendships strain, and loyalties tested. This evolution is portrayed with a depth that is rare in video games. It's not about the big plot twists, it's in the small, quiet moments of interaction that the true essence of these relationships is revealed. Who are you? To question me, I mean. I have always been loyal, Dutch. And I shall go on being loyal, but what are we doing here? We need to move and keep moving. We need... we need money! You dumb fool! Money! Or we are dead! We are all dead! In Red Dead 2, character interactions aren't just a sideshow. They're an integral part to the game's narrative. They provide a window in a world that's alive and complex where every character has a story, and every story adds a thread to the rich tapestry of Red Dead 2. But beyond the hustle and bustle of camp life, and the drama of the storyline, there loves something I absolutely loved. The serenity of solitude. It's those hours spent alone, away from the missions and the chaos of towns and people. It's the time I could spend exploring the very edges of the world, or tracking and hunting legendary animals. I found myself spending days in the silence of nature, camping in the woods, crafting arrows, preparing for the next day, making coffee and cooking meat over a fire. There's something deeply magical and personal about this aspect of the game. It's hard to put into words, but let me give it a shot. When you step away from the storyline and the crowded camps, you enter a different world, the vast, untamed wilderness. This is where the game really speaks to you, offering a quiet, introspective journey that rivals the adrenaline of its action-packed sequences. As you roam these expansive landscapes, from snow-capped mountains to dense forests and rolling plains, you feel a sense of true freedom and loneliness. It's not just a physical journey through these diverse terrains, but a journey into yourself. 
This solitude mirrors those rare, reflective moments in real life, when you step away from the noise of everyday existence, away from TikTok, away from YouTube, Instagram, work, school, family or friends. It's akin to taking a solitary hike in the wilderness, where each step clears your mind and brings you closer to a sense of inner peace. The game's world and its vast silence resemblance the calmness one might find in remote, untouched corners of the earth. The kind where the only sounds is the rustle of leaves and the distant call of wildlife. And here, solitude is not about loneliness, it's about finding connection with yourself, your true self. Just like in these moments of real-world solitude, the game allows you to hear your own thoughts, to contemplate life's big questions and reconnect with what truly matters. These moments of solitude are where you can truly connect with the essence of the game, understanding yourself not just as a player in a story, but as a solitary figure against the backdrop of an unforgiving yet beautiful world. The wilderness in Red Dead 2 is not just a space to traverse, it's a character in its own right, dynamic, alive and ever-changing. Setting up camp under the stars, the world around you feels alive and real. There's this famous photographer from the 1900s named Ansel Adams, who captured some of the most iconic images of the American wilderness. Notice the dramatic interplay of light and shadow, the majestic sweep of the landscapes, the profound tranquility in each frame. For me this image evokes a sense of awe, a deep appreciation for nature's glory, and perhaps a longing for a peaceful solitude it represents. That is the exact same feeling I get when exploring the world of Red Dead 2. Each frame in the game, whether it's a majestic mountain range, a quiet woodland, or a desolate desert, invites a sense of awe and reflection, much like Adams' black and white depictions of nature. The attention to detail in each landscape, from the way light filters through the trees to the movement of clouds across the sky, is akin to a carefully composed piece of art. These landscapes in Red Dead 2 are not just visually stunning, they evoke the same contemplative mood that great art does. They prompt you to pause, take a moment to breathe, and take in the beauty, much like standing in front of a masterpiece in an art gallery. The game in these moments becomes more than an interactive experience. It becomes a canvas that captures the sublime beauty of a natural world. The sounds of the wilderness, the rustling of animals in the bush, the distant howl of a wolf, these details create an immersive experience that I just don't remember ever experiencing in this medium. When you track animals, there's a real tension and excitement. Each track, each sign of life leads you deeper into the wild. This isn't just a quest for game trophies, it's a testament to your primal connection with nature. The process is methodical and requires patience. These moments of quiet pursuit are interspersed with bursts of intense action. The final chase, the careful aim, it's a dance with nature, where respect and understanding of the animal's behavior are as important as your skill. As you sit by the campfire, crafting and cooking, there's an opportunity for reflection. These activities, often seen as mundane, are transformed into moments of peace and contemplation. Cooking a simple meal of what you just hunted, brewing coffee in the early morning light, taking care of your horse, these tasks ground you in the world of Red Dead 2 creating a bond between you, the character, and the game that goes beyond the screen. The power of these silent moments lies in stark contrast to the game's more chaotic elements. In a world often defined by gunfights, high-speed chases, and the constant struggle for survival, these quiet interludes offer a sanctuary, a place to decompress and reflect. They are a reminder of the duality of life, the interplay between actions and stillness, noise and silence chaos and peace. Embracing this duality can lead to a more profound and balanced experience, both in the game and in your own life. These moments of tranquility in Red Dead 2 do more than just entertain, they provide a space for introspection, a rare kind of digital tranquility that allows for a personal reflection and mental rest. It's in these moments that the game transcends its role as a medium of entertainment and becomes a tool for mindfulness, offering you a chance to slow down, to appreciate the beauty and simplicity, and to find a momentary escape from the fast-paced nature of modern life, where the most addictive game is not even a video game, but social media like TikTok and Instagram. 
This solitude also allows you to explore the vastness of Red Dead's world at your own pace. It's in these quiet explorations that the game reveals its hidden treasures, secret locations, rare animals, and breathtaking views. These discoveries feel personal, like secrets shared between this world and just you. In these hours of solitude, Red Dead 2 offers a rare experience. A digital escape into wilderness, where the hustle of the outlaw life fades into background, and the beauty and tranquility of nature take center stage. It's a reminder of the world's wonders and the joys of solitary exploration. But these moments are sometimes interrupted by random encounters. That's fire. Mind if I warm my bones? Y'all niggas is Murphy Hills. You should be careful where you're camping. I can look after myself. Besides, it's a free country. Free country? <laughs> no. Everything bought and paid for. And we don't protect what's ours. Y'all be careful where you wander. Come on, let's go. I think you got the message. <laughs> These aren't scripted side missions. They're spontaneous events that you might stumble upon or completely miss. Each random encounter is a snapshot of life in the Wild West. You might come across a woman being abducted, witness robberies, or even find yourself suddenly attacked while cooking by your campfire. These events unfold in real time, adding an element of unpredictability and danger to your journey. They remind you that in this world, anything can happen at any moment. But it's not just the danger that makes these encounters so captivating. It's their variety and realism. Each encounter is a unique vignette, offering a glimpse into the lives and struggles of the frontier's inhabitants. Some encounters are like stepping into an iconic western movie. You could see arguments escalate into classic Wild West duels, or encounter folks from the Murphy Brood. These moments are crafted with such attention to detail that they immerse you completely in the game's setting and era. You feel the tension of a standoff in a dusty street, hear the creak of leather, the nervous breathing of your opponents. It's like being part of a cinematic history. Many of these encounters present moral choices. Will you help a man bitten by a snake? Aid escaped convicts by shooting the chains around their feet? Your decisions in these situations can affect your honor level in the game, further tying your actions to the game's narrative arc. But then there are darker, more bizarre encounters. You might find a gunsmith in Rhodes who's kidnapped someone, chained them in his basement and dressed them up as his dead son. But my personal favorite is when you encounter a certain clan who all like to dress the same. If you choose not to intervene with their little ritual, it's quite a funny scene that plays out. You just stood and watched a good man die. Beyond the humor and horror, these encounters also serve as a commentary on the era and the social dynamics of the time. They're a window into prejudices, fears, and hopes of the people living in the Wild West. What makes these encounters so remarkable is their contribution to the feeling that the game's world is truly alive. They happen independently of your actions, making the world of Red Dead 2 feel dynamic and organic. You get a sense that these characters have their own lives, stories, which you're just glimpsing as as you pass through. It's a world where every corner has a story, every face has a past, and every decision you make can lead to an unexpected adventure. In Red Dead Redemption 2, these random encounters are more than just a chance happenings. They are a testament to the game's incredible attention to detail and its commitment to creating a world that feels authentic, alive, and endlessly intriguing. They are moments that can be thrilling, heartwarming, or disturbing, but always memorable, adding layers of richness and depth to the whole world. But beyond random encounters, there's more. Side missions that can be missed just as easily, since they are available only for a certain period of time. 
They range from helping a scientist with his remote-controlled boat, to assisting a woman in her fight for women's right to vote, painting a picture of a world in transition. You might also find yourself aiding a French artist, caught in a scandal, reflecting this era's cultural clashes and the bustling art scene. In one mission, you help a group of circus performers find their escaped animals, adding a touch of whimsy and showcasing the traveling entertainment of the time. In another, you're tracking down a series of elusive gunslingers, each with their own backstory and reputation, bringing the classic trope of the dangerous outlaw to life. These missions also delve into more personal and emotional stories. You might encounter a veteran struggling with the memories of war, offering a powerful look at the aftermath of conflict, or a more heartfelt story of Mr. White and Mr. Black, who have escaped their imprisonment and have to rely now on each other. The diversity extends to more fantastical elements as well. For instance, you could find yourself hunting a vampire hidden in the city, a nod to the heir's fascination with the supernatural and the unknown. Each of these side missions is well designed, with its own set of characters, dialogue and outcomes. They often intervene with historical themes, societal issues or personal dramas, making them more than just tasks to be completed. They are stories to be experienced. In addition to the narrative's depth, these missions often introduce unique gameplay elements or challenges. Whether it's solving a riddle to find a treasure, engaging in a shooting contest, or navigating a moral dilemma, these missions keep the gameplay fresh and engaging. You're basically rewarded for exploring the world beyond the main storyline tracks. Just like in Elden Ring, where you have around 10 main bosses in the story, but exploring the world will lead you to dozens if not hundreds more boss encounters. Red Dead 2's side missions are as diverse as the American history and folklore they draw from. They offer a spectrum of experiences, from the humorous to the tragic, the mundane to extraordinary. Engaging with these missions is like turning the pages of a living history book, where each story adds to the richness of the game's portrayal of the Wild West era. Clothes are civilization, repression, death. To be naked is to be free, innocent. Alive. Like Buddha said, you know, we are all just here to fuck. <gasps> well, that explains the decadence of those hot and tots. Hey, you got a picture of my wife here. In her delicate. <gasps> Henry, oh. is that your behind? Oh, why would you be showing it to that man? That's my mama. <gasps> as nude as the day she was born. Oh. Stop looking at my husband's buttocks. Hmm? Stop looking at my mama. Well, maybe <laughs> she shouldn't expose herself like that. This is disgusting. A nerve on you. That's it. <laughs> Whoa, come on. When it comes to the open world genre, Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't just raise the bar. It launched it into orbit, especially when compared to some open world games that feel about as full of life as Harry Potter's parents. Red Dead 2's open world is a living, breeding entity. Unlike the earlier open world games where environments feel static, this world is dynamic and interactive. It's a far cry from games where you might as well be wandering through a beautifully rendered yet lifeless museum. Consider the other open world titles, even Rockstar's own GTA V. While Los Santos is impressive, it lacks the organic feel of Red Dead 2's world. NPCs in GTA V often feel like set pieces, whereas Red Dead 2's characters have routines, relationships, and react dynamically to the player's actions. Also, the technological leap in Red Dead 2 is monumental, from the way snow deforms underfoot in the Grizzlies, to the individual blades of grass swaying in the Great Plains, the attention to detail is staggering. Other open world games might have given us size, but this gives us so much more depth. It's the difference between looking at a postcard of the Grand Canyon and standing on its rim. And this world is not just about the visuals, it's an ecosystem. Animals hunt each other, weather affects gameplay, and your actions have lasting consequences. In contrast, let's take a game like Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Unity. While it boasts a historically rich setting of revolutionary Paris, it often feels like you're wandering in a world frozen in time. A stark contrast to dynamic life in Red Dead 2. In Unity, NPCs tend to exist in a kind of suspended animation almost, often feeling more like props than living components of the game. What I like about Red Dead Redemption 2 is that the open world isn't just a backdrop, it's an integral part of the story. From the decaying buildings of a ghost town hinting at the bygone era, to the encroaching industrialization in the cities. This seamless integration of narrative and world is something that many open world games aspire to, but only a few achieve. 
Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't just push the boundaries of what an open world game can be, it completely redefines them. It turns the open world from a static playground into a living, evolving world that's as crucial to the game's narrative as its characters and plot. While some games in the genre are content to let players skate on the surface of their worlds, Red Dead 2 invites you to dive in and immerse yourself in its depths. One aspect that deserves special recognition is the phenomenal job done by voice actors in this game. Their performances not only bring the characters to life, but also add a layer of depth and realism to the game's narrative. The voice acting in Red Dead 2 is the result of years of dedicated work, a testament to the commitment and talent of its voice cast. A prime example is Roger Clark, the voice behind game's protagonist Arthur Morgan. Clark spent five years in performance capture and recording sessions, meticulously bringing Arthur to life. His portrayal of Arthur Morgan is not just the voice acting, it's a masterful performance, arguably the best in gaming's history. I guess this is the part where words that make sense are supposed to come out of my mouth. <laughs> Thank you. I humbly accept this honor, especially in light of the amazing performances of my fellow nominees. But what some might not know is that the voice actors of Red Dead 2 didn't just go in a booth and record their voices. Their involvement in the game's creation was far more immersive and physical. The majority of their performances were captured through advanced motion capture technology, where they acted out about 90% of their scenes, embodying the characters in both voice and movement. This method allowed for more organic and expressive portrayal of characters, as the actors physically perform many of the scenes in a 3D space, capturing the nuances of body language and facial expressions, which injected a level of realism that wouldn't have been possible with just voice acting alone. Scenes involving intense emotional exchanges, physical confrontations, and even subtle moments of character interaction were all enhanced by this method. It was best summarized by Benjamin Byron Davis, the voice of Dutch Vanderlyn. It's, it's a thing, it feels odd to correct, because somebody wants to say, oh my god, I admire so much your voice in this thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, great compliment, but, but hang on now. Yeah. It's not a voice, the but we, it was the performance capture. So, yeah. you know, we were in skin tight spandex. I made it look really, really good, I tell you. <laughs> uh, Covered with ping pong balls, yeah, and uh, with helmets on our head, capturing everything our face was doing as we were performing. Yeah, I'm very proud to be a voice actor, but voice acting was maybe 15% of what I did on Red Dead. Each main character had a script that was as lengthy as the screenplay for several movies combined. This extensive work is evident in the game, where every character, from the main cast to the NPCs, feels nuanced and authentic, especially the most lovable characters like the ones played by Peter Blomquist, who you might remember from other titles. I did a, a character in uh, Rockstar's uh, L.A. Noir. Oh, what's um, the character? Uh, Dr. Harlan Fontaine. Dr. Fontaine, could I have a word? Of course, young man. I really enjoyed your lecture, doctor. Psychiatry seems to have a tremendous amount to offer. Why, thank you. I'm always happy to receive acknowledgement for my work. The mind is the last great mystery in medicine. He's a, he's a, um, a, a very sweet, kind, and loving man. Yeah, yeah. No, he's the opposite of that. <laughs> the opposite of that. Um, just like the you know character I'm playing in Red Dead uh, Two, yeah. a very gentle, loving, yeah. gracious. We, we all believe that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I feel inside. Yeah, that's you, what you feel. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what the... One more thing that blew me away when it comes to voice acting in Red Dead Two is how it dynamically changes based on the player's position and context. If Arthur is having a conversation with someone close by, the dialogue is delivered in a normal conversational tone. However, if Arthur is further away, the characters start shouting to communicate over the distance. This dynamic approach meant the voice actors had to record many lines multiple times to capture the different tones needed for varying distances and situations. This commitment to detail ensures that every interaction in the game feels natural and realistic, no matter the player's actions or position in the environment. Just absolute legends, all of them. 
you're probably the first ever video game villain I've actually like really despised and really wanted to punch in the face. Thank like, you. When I was like, when I was on the controller and got up on that hill, I was just like, <laughs> you. Like, yeah. it, was just yeah. like, it was just like that. Thank yeah. you. That's how I felt when I played the game. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> really meta, right? Yeah, no, I shot myself in the face, and then I'm in the bathroom and I'm going, what do I do? You know. <laughs> Who's Micah? Who's Peter? I don't know anymore. I, does that answer your question? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> All of the things mentioned so far are aspects I enjoyed and thought were done well. By end of the day, our enjoyment of this medium is highly subjective. With that said, no game is perfect, and that includes Red Dead Redemption 2. While I have extensively praised the many facets of Red Dead 2 for their innovation and depth, it's important to also cast a critical eye on areas where the game may not quite hit the mark. And one of the more noticeable limitations is in its approach to story missions, where the game often follows the old Rockstar formula of rigid mission structures. This stark contrast to the freedom and dynamics of the open world, leading to moments of frustration and a sense of being railroaded. In these missions, the game often dictates your actions with an iron fist. You went too far away, fail. You shot someone you weren't supposed to, fail. Dodge broke a nail when you made that corner, fail. You took a creative but unscripted approach to a problem that we do not approve of, fail. The game repeatedly nudges, or rather shoves, you back to the narrow path it has laid out, regardless of your personal playstyle or problem-solving approach. A prime example is the mission Blood Feuds Ancient and Modern. In this mission, the game requires you to follow a very specific path to the Braithwaite Manor, and deviating from it results in an instant fail. This feels particularly restrictive given the open nature of the game's world. Another mission, The Gilded Cage, forces you into a scripted sequence of events during the party, leaving little room for player agency, or creative approaches to the objective. These missions, while narratively engaging, often contrast sharply with otherwise open and player-driven nature of the game. It can be especially jarring when coming off the freedom of exploring the open world, only to be funneled into a narrow set of actions and outcomes. Imagine if Red Dead 2 took a page from the latest Hitman series, where missions are open-ended and allow for a multitude of approaches where you're just given a target and an environment, but how you achieve your objective is entirely up to you. This freedom to experiment and devise your own strategies leads to a, a lot more engaging and replayable experience, in my opinion. Incorporating this level of freedom in Red Dead 2's story missions would have been fascinating. For instance, in the mission where you have to rob the Valentine's Bank, imagine having multiple ways to execute the heist choosing to go in guns blazing, stealthily sneaking in through the back, or even conning your way in. Such options would provide a more immersive and dynamic gameplay experience, allowing you to leverage the full extent of the game's mechanics in the world. This approach would enable players to feel like their choices and creativity have a real impact on the game's world and story. This approach could also lead to varied outcomes based on different strategies, adding to the game's replay value and player engagement. While the story missions in Red Dead 2 are well-crafted and narratively rich, their rigidness can be a point of contention. Offering players more freedom on how they approach these missions could have added an extra layer of depth and replayability, making the game's narrative experience as dynamic and player-driven as its open world. But with that said, Red Dead Redemption 2 is more than just a game. It's a testament to gaming as an art form. From its meticulously crafted open world and deep, emotionally resonant story, to its dynamic gameplay and cinematic influences, Red Dead 2 stands as a pinnacle of what video games can achieve. It's a game that blends storytelling, technology and artistry in a way that few others have ever managed. Playing Red Dead Redemption 2 is not just about experiencing a story, it's about immersing yourself in a world that feels alive. It's a journey that stands with you filled with moments of action, contemplation, and emotional depth. This game has not only captured the hearts of many, but also sparked conversations about the potential and future of video gaming. So why you should play Red Dead Redemption 2? Simply because it's an experience that transcends traditional gaming. It offers a window into a past era, a canvas for a deep narrative exploration, and a benchmark for what open world gaming can be. A benchmark that no other game has met since. Whether you're in it for the story, the exploration, the technical marvels, or simply to live out your Wild West fantasies, Red Dead 2 delivers on all fronts. It's a game that you don't just play, you live it. 
And in doing so, you might find something about the game that resonates uniquely just with you. My lord, what a goddamn mess. Everything. Not sure what happens next. Whole thing has been hard on all of us. Most of all on Dutch, who seems half crazed by all we gone through. If you enjoyed this video, I also made a video on Arthur Morgan and his story, so feel free to check it out next. Thanks for watching.